Hello everybody, I uh, just wanted to make a quick video on how to use the sequencer on Roland's DJ202 and not only just how to make your own patterns but also some tips and tricks on how to incorporate it with music. Okay, so first things first, what you're going to want to do is uh, hit the sequencer button. It should be uh, glowing solid and that means you're in step edit mode. So the first thing you want to do is hold shift and uh, actually the very first thing you're going to want to do is hit this hold shift and press plus. That will um, give you the samples for the TRS kit rather than if you hit this minus uh, you'll be using samples from Serato. Okay so hit that plus um, and now what you want to do is hold shift and select one of these pads and these basically represent the different drum hits that you have. So this first one here is the kick drum. Um, I'll go ahead and enter them in on the uh, down beats here. Each of these pads represents a 16th note in the measure, and when I start playing this, you'll see that it kind of rolls through, and you'll know what I mean when you see it. So you can see I've added the kick drum on each of the down beats, which is a four on the floor, pretty simple pattern. So now if you hold shift, you can select a different drum kit, or not a different kit, but rather a different drum hit. Uh, so we'll do hi-hats and do those on the up beats. You can select a clap, do it in there, and the two and four, and there you go. It's a pretty simple, um, you know, starter beat there. Uh, so now if you press sequencer again, you'll enter live record mode. Um, and if you hit play here, you can see the drum pads actually light up as that drum plays. Now if you hit another drum, you can see it actually gets entered into the pattern and continues to play. Okay, so you get the idea there. Um, now another thing you'll want to do is, uh, or another thing you can do, is hold shift, and if you press on a pad, it will remove that from the pattern. That's useful for cutting out the kick drum during a build-up section or during a breakdown section. And then you can just easily add it back in. <clears throat> okay, so another thing you can do is if you hold shift and then press sequencer, that will enter pattern mode. So you can see this one is activated because that's the pattern we have selected right now. But if it's playing and you press another one, it actually switches patterns at the end of the measure there. <clears throat> now if you hold shift and press the sequencer button again, it will enter live play mode. This doesn't actually record those drum hits into the pattern, but you can just freestyle on top of your patterns. That's a basic look at how to create your own patterns on the sequencer. Now I'll go into some more um, higher level stuff, some more tips on how to actually incorporate this sequencer with the music that you're playing on either deck. Okay, so you can see I've already got uh, two songs loaded up on either deck right now. Um, and also if you're going to want to use this method for syncing the sequencer, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is go into your Serato settings and turn on Smart Sync mode instead of simple sync. Um, now what that does is it basically makes it so that the first deck you press sync on becomes the master tempo uh, and then if you press sync on another deck whether that be the right deck or on the sequencer it sort of takes that and matches that to the tempo of the master. I find that uh, mode to be a lot more uh, sort of self-explanatory and also less prone to jumping the beat around uh, whenever you turn on sync. Uh, so, let's go ahead and start this song, I guess. So what I'll do first is turn on the sync on this master deck, and then I'll turn on sync on the sequencer so it's matched to the same tempo. What you want to do is turn the sampler down and turn on the cue. Okay, so now here, what you want to do is listen closely to the sequencer and try to figure out if it's rushing or lagging behind the song. So if it's lagging behind like it is here, you'll want to pull the jog wheel back until they're perfectly in line. And same thing the other way. 
So you can slowly incorporate that in.